Hey guys, happy Friday. Just like we would do at school, we're gonna take a quiz today. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna view everything that we uh, learned this week and we're gonna make sure that you're ready to go uh, so that you're prepared to take that quiz. Um, so make sure that you have the classwork open. Go ahead and pause your uh, video now to do the PDN and come back when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, looking at this first one, I actually gave you the intervals uh, to start 0 to 49, 50 to 99. The next one would be $1 to $1.49. And then the last one would be $1.50 to $1.99. Looking for our frequency, 0 to 49 cents. One, just one. 50 to 99 cents. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, one dollar to dollar forty nine, one, two, three, four, four to a dollar forty nine, and one fifty to one ninety nine. There's actually zero, so if you didn't include this interval, no problem at all. Up here, I had one, two, three, one, two, three, four. 12 all together, so make sure there's 12 down here. One plus seven is eight, eight plus four is 12, 12 plus zero is 12. I then have one out of 12 here. Unfortunately, I cannot make that a, um, I can't just put that equal to 100, so I actually have to do a division problem where I divide one divided by 12. When I do one divided by 12, I get 0 0.08. I can stop at the hundredths place, which is 8%. This one is seven out of 12. When I do that division problem and do seven divided by 12, I end up with 0 0.58, which is 58%. And when I do four out of 12, I, when I do that division problem, I get 0 0.33, which is 33%. If I add these up, eight plus 58, get, sorry, eight plus 58, gives me 66, 66 plus 33 gives me 99. Even though I didn't get to 100, 99 is close enough. The reason that we only got to 99 is because there was rounding. Okay, so we're actually gonna just review everything that we've done in statistics so far so that you're ready to go with your quiz. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you how you should log on to your quiz. First, let's review what we've learned about uh, statistics. The first thing we went over is what is a statistical question? And we said that it has to have population and variance. Remember, population means it's about more than one thing. Variance means there's more than one answer. So this first question, do you for, prefer to be the player who moves first or the player who moves second? That's only asking me and there's only two choices. So that does not have population or variance. That would be not a statistical question. How many chess games have you played? Zero. Okay, the population is just asking me and there's no variance because I'm only gonna have one answer. That's not statistical. Have you ever won a trophy? Yes or no questions. Yes or no questions can't be statistical. That would be no. What is your rating number in a numerical rating system for chess? Now, this does have variance as long as I'm asking more than one person. So if I was just asking me, there's no population. But if I were to ask this question to everyone in this class, then yes, it would be statistical. How many chess tournaments have you attended? Again, it depends what I'm asking. If you're just asking me, then the answer is no, it's not statistical. But assuming that I'm asking everyone in the class, yes, that's a whole population. Yes, there is variance because different people will give different answers. Okay. Next thing we learned about is how we describe data. When I look at this chart, I should be able to name the attribute. The attributes, what is this about? It's about tree diameters. What's the unit? It actually doesn't tell me the unit. Um, so I'm gonna assume that this is talking about inches, but I would accept multiple answers to this depending on what um, you thought that these measurements were. What is the means? How do you measure a diameter of a tree? I would use a ruler. I might use a tape measure. Um, if there's another uh, tool you could use, you can certainly tell me. And how many observations are there? Well, let's see, there's 10 in this box. There's 15 in this box and there's five here. So 10 plus 15 is 25 plus five is 30. But tell me there's 30 observations all together. This is not a question you would have answered the first day, but now that we know histograms, we can also figure out how many observations. After we did uh, attributes, we moved on to dot plots. We could answer any question about this dot plot. This particular question says how many students are represented in the dot plot? One, two, three, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So my answer is 16. That's my number of observations. That's the size of my population. Next, I have a frequency table and relative frequency table. Here are some reminders about what intervals have to be like, because that'll be on your quiz today. Um, this was an example of one we did earlier in the week where I did my interval, I did my frequencies, I figured out, remember relative frequency, we have to make it out of 100. I knew this number is 20 because there's 20 all together here. It's not always gonna be 20, so be careful on that. Last thing we did was histograms. I could answer a bunch of questions on this histogram. The first one says, what are the intervals? We have 20 to 29, we have 30 to 39, et cetera. That's a question you'd be able to answer. What's the most common interval? Our biggest one right here is eight. It's 50 to 59. It's asking about the interval, so the most common is 50 to 59. What's the attribute? What are we talking about here? We're talking about the age of water lottery winners. How many people your age won? There's no one in the category of zero to 19. You all are between zero and 19 years old, so zero. How many people Mr. Magnot's age won? Hmm, depends how old I am. Don't be making jokes right now, Mia, about how old I am. I am in the 30 to 39 range, thank you very much, which means that five people my age won. And last example, what does the horizontal axis represent? So these are our different intervals. This is talking about our distance from school. So this would be five people went zero to five miles. Three people went six to 10 miles. So these are miles and these are people. So when it's asking for the horizontal, remember the horizontal is the one that's on the bottom. So these are the amount of miles, the distance from school. Okay, you're now ready to start your quiz. For your quiz, again, if you are having any trouble at all, give me a call right now and I can help you through this. This quiz is only gonna be open on Friday between eight and four, so that's the only opportunity you have to take it. The first question you're gonna answer in your Google Doc, you're looking at all this information and you're creating a relative frequency table, which is something that you've done before. Um, we've been doing all week. After you've created your relative frequency table, you can turn this assignment in and I will check it. And then you're going to log on to Illuminate and there is a quiz ready for you. Just like we did in school, you'll take your quiz on Illuminate. Again, if you're having any trouble at all, give me a call and I'll help you get on. Once you finish your quiz, make sure you take your Khan Academy quiz and then you're good to go for the week and we'll be back next week. Again, any questions at all, give me a call, 847-769. 4731. Good luck on your quiz. Text me with questions and have a great weekend.